So the first thing that you're aware of is uh, heat at the back of the neck, closely followed by the blast. And then a wind comes because the nuclear explosion for a great heat takes wind into the air and wind rushes in to replace it. And then after a very short time, the wind reverses its direction. So it comes quite a heavy wind in the opposite direction. And so you, you have these series of shocks. You're not really expecting any of them. And then of course you can turn eventually and look at the explosion. And so you see this fireball going up into the air. And of course the whole thing has a beauty about it. No question about that. The colors are nice. The, the energy involved clearly is enormous and the temperature is enormous, so it's an exciting thing to see. But of course it's also extremely disturbing because after the event, when you think about it, you imagine that happening over a city, well, people being burnt and destroyed by blast and also of course damaged by the radiation which comes. It's very easy to make a nuclear weapon, particularly if you have highly enriched uranium. This is uranium in which the percentage of isotope uranium-235 has been increased. And if you increase it up to uh, 90%, then you can make a nuclear weapon because you only have to take two masses of it, which is less than the mass you require for a nuclear explosion, drop one on top of the other or fire one into another so that they join, and that will give you a nuclear explosion. Well, that's so simple that even school kids could do it. It is childishly simple to do once you've got the material. And this is a grave concern. If a terrorist group could get hold of highly enriched uranium, so simple to make a bomb, then one shudders to think what would happen. The more the public realise this danger, the better, because it may eventually get through to politicians. Whether that will succeed or not, I don't know. I'm very pessimistic about that. But I, that's the reason for writing this book. Well, when you discuss children and grandchildren and the future, it's very difficult. Intellectually and academically, there is pessimism. But from a family point of view, one is as optimistic as the next person. The scientist has the duty to inform people about what is happening. But also there is the motivation of um, wanting to prevent catastrophe. In other words, if you can see that a certain human course of action will lead to catastrophe, and I think you're motivated to try and prevent that happening if you can. And therefore, I think people working in nuclear disarmament have very much have that motivation.